When he saw Cleopatra sail away from the battlefield with 60 Egyptian ships, Mark Antony's heart sank. It was September 2nd, 31st BC. Mark Antony's fleet was engaged in a fierce naval battle against his former ally Octavian at the Gulf of Actium. His army was fighting in the name of Cleopatra, and she was fleeing. As he watched the Egyptian ships leave, the general remembered the events that had brought them to this point. It all started with the assassination of Julius Caesar in 44 BC. A group of Roman senators, who were afraid that Caesar was getting too strong, caught the dictator off guard and killed him. Caesar had great trust in Mark Antony. The general owed his entire career and life to Caesar. That was why, he joined forces with Lepidus and Octavian to avenge Caesar's death. Lepidus was another aide of Caesar and Octavian was his nephew. The trio crushed the conspirators and their supporters. After taking their revenge, they began to rule the Roman Republic with the approval of the Senate. Their joint rule was called the Second Triumvirate, and it lasted for ten years. Lepidus, the weakest link of the Triumvirate, was forced to withdraw in the seventh year as a result of the political maneuvers of Octavian. The relation between Octavian and Mark Antony was already in turmoil, and this incident further strained the tensions. Both sides began to look for an opportunity to make a move against each other. Octavian found his opportunity in Mark Antony's greatest weakness. Antony was married to Octavian's sister. It was a marriage made for political reasons. The general's real love was Cleopatra. The Egyptian queen was a woman with deadly charm. She was the ex-lover of late Julius Caesar and had a child with him. After Caesar's demise, she set her sights on Mark Antony. She wanted to stay in the political power game and Mark Antony was the best pawn she could use for this purpose. In the blink of an eye, she made Mark Antony fall in love with her. The general started living with Cleopatra in Egypt. He was deeply in love with the queen. However, love was a dangerous weakness for those who played deadly games in politics. Octavian was quick to use Mark Antony's relationship with Cleopatra to his advantage. Rome was an arrogant republic. In the eyes of the Romans, Egypt was a low-level civilization that they used as a grain store. It was unacceptable for the respected Mark Antony to leave his noble Roman wife and live with the queen of this civilization. Octavian claimed that Cleopatra had bewitched Mark Antony. This precious son of the Republic had to be rescued from the mystical influence of the Queen of the East. The intense propaganda activity carried out by Octavian yielded results in 32 BC, and the Roman Senate declared war on Cleopatra. Being authorized by the Senate, Octavian quickly mobilized his legions. Seeing his rivals' moves, Mark Antony also began to prepare for war. The armies and navies of the parties gathered at the Actium Peninsula. Cleopatra was with Mark Antony. She had brought 60 Egyptian warships with her. For both sides, there was a critical decision to make. The battle could be fought either on land or at sea. Octavian's generals favored fighting at sea. Mark Antony's generals on the other hand, suggested fighting on land to their commander. It was Cleopatra who had the last word. The Queen of Egypt persuaded her lover to fight Octavian at sea. With the support of her 60 Egyptian ships, Mark Antony would easily defeat Octavian. And here we are, thought Mark Antony. The two fleets were fighting since morning. They were so evenly matched that neither of them could suppress the other. This was what Mark Antony expected. He would break the deadlock by using Cleopatra's ships. However, these ships were now fleeing from the battlefield. As he watched Cleopatra leave, his heart ached. A few seconds later, he ordered his men to set the sails. He would betray his legions. He would follow Cleopatra. That day Mark Antony followed his heart and went after Cleopatra. In his absence his leaderless army was slaughtered by the soldiers of Octavian. The decisive result of the Battle of Actium became the first step of the decline of the general. In the following months, Octavian conquered Egypt. In the face of absolute defeat and humiliation, Mark Antony and Cleopatra committed suicide.